told you so. Please welcome back M.H. Murray. I told you so, too. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. That was really sweet. <laughs> uh, we can talk very briefly for a second okay. and then bring some yeah, people Yeah, and I'm going to call some people up um, to speak with me. But I wanted to start by just asking, um, I know this is a personal project for you, and, and you'd worked with, um, with Mark on, on a short film called Ghost that is about, oh, oh. sorry, oh. is this not coming through? Um, that's better. Uh, I know that uh, MH had, uh, this is a very personal story, and that um, he had worked with Mark Clennon on a short film called Ghost, which is about Benjamin, but a different sort of Benjamin. Like, it's a very, very different short. And I've been telling people to see this first, because go out and find Ghost, because it's really good, but this is a completely different experience. So what was the impetus to make the feature and, and jump into this sort of story? Um, well... Ghost was like a little practice run for us to test out working together and for us to explore the character and explore um, Mark's space because this is actually his apartment that we shot in uh, in the film. So it was very invasive, but he was a really good sport. And you know, I think we found every nook and cranny of the apartment that we could to make it look like cinema. And um, once we did the short film and it had a positive reception, we decided to make something bigger. And we started, obviously I spoke to Mark about the story and um, I spoke about it with uh, my other story editor, Victoria Long, and also a producer. And they kind of helped me filter my own experience through this character of Benjamin. and. Yeah, it became this. <laughs> well, we can bring up the collaborators yes, now. Yeah, so and Mark, Victoria, Nat, Anthony, Spencer, Dimitri, and um, my mother, Martine, who also produced the film. Come, come on up, everybody. This bit's always awkward when we have so many people, but we'll, uh, we'll, we will get to everyone, I promise. Um, Mark and, yeah, uh, Mark Clennon, everybody. I just want to clarify. We did not do this on purpose like this. This was not on purpose. And I drew my outfit first. Mark wanted me to clarify that, so yeah. I copied him a little bit. It's very soothing. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, considering how intensely emotional this film is, I mean, this, I, I saw this several months ago, and it was like, um, it was like a, uh, like a rock tumbler. You're just sitting there being bashed around emotionally in a, in a really I'm good sorry. way. Because, no, no, no. That's what cinema is. Uh, never apologize. But, um, but, it is intense, and you're asking a lot of each other as collaborators to, to put yourselves through this thing together. And I know it was uh, a very small project. There wasn't a lot of money to throw around. So how do you, how do you create that, that trust between, your, between each other, knowing what you're about to do to yourselves emotionally to make this film? Yeah. Um, I'll let you do that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I think for me, I, uh, First of all, thank you so much for coming tonight, you guys. This is amazing. Thank you. Um, 
a few weeks ago, MH and I were like, what if no one comes? Oh my God, it'll just be us. And we couldn't even get tickets for our friends, so thank you so much for stealing your spots. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I have such confidence in MH's talent that even though we had a small budget and we didn't have a lot of resources and there were so many challenges, I was just like, you know what? I trust you, I trust the process, and I had so many great collaborators, so many great people behind the scenes that won't even be, you know, get, get the opportunity to be on stage today who did so many great things. So I think having such a great team, I was like, let's do it. You know, it, yeah, there are a lot of restrictions and there are a lot of um, uh, challenges given the size of the project and the resources that we had, but, um, but yeah, we pulled it off. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I love this, and I want people to know, at my screenings, you can applaud as many times as you want during the q and I give you, I cede my time. Um, but we should go down the line and make sure everyone knows who everyone is, just in case uh, there's some confusion. So please, introduce yourselves and, and be applauded. I'm Dimitri, I'm the cinematographer. Hi everyone, I'm Anthony and I play as Malcolm. Good evening everyone, my name is Nat Manuel and I play Ariel. Um, hi, I'm uh, Spencer and I'm the uh, composer on the film. I'm Martine, I'm MH's mom and producer. Uh, I'm Victoria, and I was a producer and story editor, and Lola, technically. <laughs> well, so let's talk about that. Thank you all for, for coming. Thank you all for making the movie. Thank you all for coming. I didn't get to do that at the top. Um, where is the, the line between fact and fiction? But when, did, when did you have to let go of, of the character of Benjamin and let Mark tell that story? Um, where, how, do you, how do you all, and, and Victoria, I guess this is a question for you as well, how do you find the shape of the film? I think, um, you know, when Mark and I did Ghost before that, so we were able to develop like a really good working relationship, and then we started kikiing, and we became really good friends, and now we're uh, really tight, and I think like doing this film, like I said, it, I was able to filter my own experience, so all the logistics of it are true, but then there's little parts like uh, stuff with the parents and the me. Uh, I cannot hold a note for my life. I don't know how to play any instruments. I did play clarinet for like two years, but that doesn't count. Um, so l allowing Mark to sort of take over and also being in his space uh, allowed him to, I think, have a lot of agency. And um, I was super excited to not have the film be just like all about me kind of thing. Like I really wanted to bring other people's perspectives into it. And I'm so grateful for everyone that helped make it. And I think, yeah, I'll let them continue like speaking on the rest of it. Please, yeah. What was the question again? <laughs> I guess. This is the story question, really. How do you shape the story into something that isn't just a, a specific personal story? I mean, because the personal, the more the more specific you get, the more universal the story becomes. I mean, everybody can relate to the anxiety. Everyone can relate to even just a, that that scene towards the end of of people just telling each other the the truth mm -hmm. and the way the tension. We were just talking about this backstage. The way the tension just sort of seeps into the floor and everybody can just sort of relax and be honest with each other for the first time in the movie. It's like the movie breathes. It's where sunlight comes in. We can talk about the lighting and the, 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 the visual design. But it is such a, even the daylight scenes are kind of flattened and bleak. And so the way that you structure the script to have waves of emotion and tension and then to just release it the way you do is, I like, I thought it was beautiful and, and and honest, like it's what it feels like to unburden yourself. And you don't see that in movies a lot, that you see a lot of scripted versions of that. But this feels real and honest and people are using whatever words they can think of. And, and that sort of reach feels really, really human and, and, and earnest and it's kind of beautiful. So yeah, how did you arrive there? Yes, Victoria, please, we'll get you a mic. Um, in relation to uh, 
working with Matthew's initial story, uh, you know, and, and trying to make sure that it kept the audience the whole time, I feel like um, there was a, a few different versions of the script where Benjamin kind of, you know, had different reactions to things and, you know, certain bigger reactions, maybe smaller reactions, different places, and like trying to make sure that if there's one thing, you know, there's places for every kind of cinema, but one thing that can be frustrating sometimes in a, a movie where you're so present like this with the character is when they do something and you're just like, oh, why, why would you do that right now? Or why would you do this right now? And I feel like, you know, the best movies to me are ones where even if it's not a character that you've lived this experience and you wouldn't make some of the choices, the position that, that you're, they're in, you can think like, okay, well, what, what else would they do right now? And, you know, so trying to make sure that it was always a, uh, keeping Benjamin's character like just on the edge of like reasonable, you know, but also um, vulnerable and, and trying everything, but not, you know, not necessarily going as far as he thinks about going and, you know, that, yeah, I think was part of it. Yeah, I mean, watching desperation and panic leak through someone who's trying to be brave is just heartbreaking. It's, I, I compared it to Uncut Gems a couple of times, which is, a big stretch, but this has a much happier ending, which is nice. Spoilers for Uncut Gems. But, um, but you do, like, it is, it's a path towards instead of running away from. He's constantly trying and trying to put a brave face and, and not dealing with his trauma. And, and we've, we've talked about the, the, the difficulty of that, where you're, you're trying not to crack, and that's all anyone can see. Like, the, the camera reads it right away. We feel it in every scene. And... How do you do that without cracking yourself? I mean, how do you how do you convey that as an actor? Because you have to hold the camera and not want to like, somehow not want to be seen at the same time. You just just jumped right in. How did you do it? I think I think it speaks to the kind of environment that we had on set. It was a very supportive environment where you felt safe as an actor to go there and to be that person and. You know, this was one of the most challenging creative experiences of my life because I've done music and I've done, I've acted before, but this is such a, a leap in the acting, in, in acting in the sense that you're um, being asked of so much and there's such um, a variety of emotions that you have to carry and um, I felt very supportive, supported throughout the process. Um, I will say though, I didn't think that this was hard until um, like I was like, oh my gosh, it's so much fun, woo! And I remember um, after the first day we wrapped, I um, just got home, well, I was home already because we were filming my house, but um, <laughs> I just uh, sat on my couch and you know, you ever have those moments where it's like seven hours passes and you don't realize it because I was so dazed and I realized that I had just thrown myself into it and done it because I think that's kind of the instinct that many of us have is we just do it, you know, we just go for it. And then I realized after the fact that I'd done the scenes and I'd spent all day crying and being emotional that I was like, oh my God, I really felt that. But I think there was a really cool atmosphere for all of us on set, from my, I mean, from my perspective, of just support and collaboration and it was a really safe space where everyone felt um, supported in that. Yeah, please. Sure. Yeah, um, I mean, what I really liked was that everybody on set was trusting, so cast and crew, and I think because we had that on set all the time, it really allowed, you know, as an actor to really have fun with the challenge, especially given the context that of the film. It's very heavy context in case you didn't know. Um, but no, it was, it was a great opportunity, and I mean, MH, Mark, and everybody here, they're just so friendly and so polite, and even when I first met them, because you know, starting this film, it was my first time meeting them. Um, automatically, felt like I knew them forever. So it was really great, and it made things really easy and, and really fun. I did crack. <laughs> Entirely. S still not fixed. <laughs> Next question. I mean, you'd never know it from the film. The performance is great. Thank you. Let's see. And that's how you deflect. Um, we should uh, throw it to the audience if you don't. I just don't want to lose anybody's questions. I'm sure people will have something to say. Do we have anybody? Um, I apologize. The lights are right in my... Yes, down front. Is there a version of the script where you do sell your saxophone and essentially you sold your soul? And what would be the consequence of selling your soul? <laughs> All 
Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> Morgan. Oh, <laughs> there was there was more stuff in the script initially about him trying to sell the sax and like going on Kijiji and Kijijiing, but it just wasn't that exciting like visually. So we just kept it. I mean, yeah. And um, so we just kind of kept it as more of like something that was shown and kind of alluded to, and that he was able to avoid. Um, and the consequences of selling your soul. Hmm, haven't done it yet, so <laughs> if I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> Is there, was there someone up in the back? Oh, yes, all the way over there. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think it was important for it to be in the city in Toronto, but I don't think we ever wanted it to be like a character. Um, it was supposed to be just in the background and we were supposed to follow Mark and the whole approach behind the camera was like a very documentary-esque fly on the wall, but with a little bit more of a intimate perspective, I guess. So being a little bit closer to the performers with a little bit of a wider lens uh, was sort of the approach just to make it feel like you're right there with them as opposed to observing them. Yeah, and the um, the coldness too really hit me. The fact that you shot, I know you shot most of it downtown except for the pharmacy sequence. It was actually mostly shot in the East End, okay. like around, like on Queen Street or around that area. And then obviously the uh, scene with Dara, Agnes, um, when he goes up to the rooftop that was at the Shangri-La downtown, because I felt like it really juxtaposed all the other stuff and just showed like that difference of living. Um, but I guess, you know, the east end around there kind of looks a lot like Roncesvalles a little bit, like the three-story buildings and things like that, and the streetcar going by. So it's a little bit vague. You know, if, if you're from Toronto, you might notice, but if you're not, I think it's vague enough. And the pharmacy was? The pharmacy was in the East End as well. Oh, I thought it was yeah. further north or something. Mm -hmm. It was like a little north. But north it's a point. real location. In it is, and Chris is here, the pharmacist. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Um, I have to say, so all the healthcare workers in the film were real life healthcare workers. So, Randy, who performed Woo! the. Woo! Yes. Randy uh, performed the HIV rapid test, which was real. And then uh, Cheryl was the ER doctor. And Cheryl. Cheryl. Woo! Cheryl! Yeah, Cheryl. Yes. <laughs> She's worked with uh, HIV patients since the 80s, and she was such a great um, person to have on set, and she wrote us a real prescription and just made it feel as real as possible. And then Chris, uh, we showed up at his pharmacy one day, and we were just like, so. Initially, I wanted to shoot at a shopper's because that was my experience, going to shoppers, and, but then it just logistically was more expensive, and also it just looked <laughs> more sterile, kind of, and like the small, there's something about the smaller pharmacy that just felt more interesting visually, and uh, Chris was so, I just wanna say Chris was so generous uh, allowing us, because I don't think he exactly knew what we were gonna do in there, <laughs> but we did show him the script, and then w when we were like, okay, so we're gonna be, you know, jumping over and knocking all the pills around. He was like, go for it, go for it. And we were like, really, are you sure? And he was really cool about it. So I'm so grateful to those three for bringing their expertise to the film and um, helping it feel as authentic as possible and letting us use their space and yeah. yeah. Uh, again, it's all about the texture. Yes, dead center. Oh, he knows. Well, we're we are we're working with Vortex Media for a Canadian theatrical uh, release sometime in the future. So I'm really excited. Uh, 
I'm really excited that we'll be able to be in cinemas um, in Canada at least, and we're also working, you know, with a few other people to try to take it uh, internationally. So stay tuned. My hope is basically just that it can be out there for as many people to see as possible, and I hope that, you know, this is just the beginning for this little movie, and yeah. Thank you so much for the kind words. Tell your friends. Tell them. <laughs> Spread the word. We have another screening tomorrow, pretty much sold out. But, you know, people might want to be able to come and do the rush line. We would love to have them. I think we have time for one more question, uh, if there is one. And if there isn't... Oh, wait. Okay. Ooh, bunch of hands. Oh, bunch. panic buying. Okay, okay, let's do more than just one. Oh, two more? We got to clear the room. <laughs> two, okay, two more. I'm going to be the mean. One more. We have time okay, for fine. one more. Uh, I'm sorry. I did see someone up there. Yes, go for it. Is that Leah? Yeah. Hey, babe. Hey. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, Do you know everybody? <laughs> I um, It's a great question. Thank you. Uh, you know, for me as an artist, I think I try to do as much as I can uh, with my work. And, you know, whenever I get a chance, I try to speak about things that I can with people in the community and people outside the community. Um, I think... As artists, it's, you know, we have a lot of inclinations to try to be as politically active as we can or to try to be involved and try to make a difference. And I think that's really important. And I think, you know, not not everybody can be an, an activist. And I think as artists, we can do our activism through our art. And I try to do that. Um, but I would love to hear if anyone else has any to add to that, Mark? I think one thing we can start by doing is being compassionate with each other. And I think that one thing I think is really cool about this film is it shows a real person going through a real thing, a real horrific thing. And um, one of the biggest takeaways I had, obviously I saw it, but when I saw it the first time, I remember thinking um, how I would love to, if I were in his world, how I would love to be kind to him and to be you know, to help him and just to be there for him. And I think this is a very tragic um, set of adversity that he's facing. However, I think not just as us as queer people, but as all people, I think that we can implore ourselves to be kinder to each other and to to just imagine that this person might be having a hard day. They're, they may be burdening something very heavy. And how can I be kind to them? How can I lift them up? as opposed to tearing them down. I think that we live in an era where there is so much divisiveness and there's so much um, opinions and anger. And I, I think one thing that we could all do is just lead with kindness and go out into the world and just try and be good people to everyone around us. It's a good strategy. Um, don't be the worst part of anybody's day. That's what I've been telling people. Well, you were just the best part of everybody's day. So enjoy that. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for being here. Give it up one more time. Woo! Woo!